What's up, guys? Welcome to Chargers Weekly. We are here at Joint Practices. Chargers Cowboys Day 2 just wrapped up. And, buddy, I, I look to my left, I see Jerry Jones. I look to my right, I see Drew Brees. Everybody's out for this one. Yeah, and you know, one of my all-time favorite Chargers, Lorenzo Neal out. So he oh, and Neal's Drew, here. yeah. So Zoe and Drew uh, were, were watching Chargers defense versus Cowboys offense for a little while. Good to see both of them catching up. Uh, reminiscing about the salad days uh, <laughs> during their time with the Chargers. That really was a star-studded affair. A lot of national media out, obviously. Peter King out here covering camp for these two days. Understandable. It's two teams that, you know, in their respective conferences are expected to, to make a lot of noise and make a run. I, I thought some good work uh, on both sides. We'll get into observations. We're expected to be joined by Chris Rumpf and Zion Johnson. So two guys who um, we're really excited about uh, this upcoming season. Uh, I saw you looking at uh, Cowboys offense versus Chargers defense. So I went to the other side. What did you see here day two? Yeah, so I did offense yesterday. I did defense today. Um, and, you know, we can wait because Chris is going to sit down with us oh, right now. Oh, here we go. So we're going to get, get him in there. We're talking to defense. Chris <laughs> Rump joining us. Yeah, no, I was watching Chris, actually. You were watching Chris. Uh, you kick it off then with Chris. Absolutely. Well, let's – you know what? Yeah, I guess we'll work backwards. We'll talk today versus <laughs> yesterday. Did you have any? I was tra I couldn't tell. Did you have any one on ones versus Tyron? I did. I did yesterday. How's that? I How's did that? Yesterday. Yeah, he's a. I respect. I understand why people you know understand. He's probably gonna be a first round, uh, first battle Hall of Fame in the future. So uh, going against a guy like that is only gonna make me better. And you know, I, I crave it. I want to go against the best so I can get better myself. You know, you know, I, I expect myself to be you know one of the top dogs and, and here oh, yeah. pretty soon. Well, you were showing it on uh, on Saturday. Before we get into Saturday, what was this like these last two days of work for you it was great you know this is my first time uh doing a joint practice i was hurt last year so uh coming out here against you know a, a good dallas team uh, it was very physical um but i loved it i loved the competition you know it's a switch up from going against your own teammates so um i understand why a lot of people enjoy this this week they always talk about um seems like this is something that that coaches really value the yeah. joint practices even more than preseason mm -hmm. games kind of for people that are watching that, that may look at some film or whatever that people are sharing you know, what are the limitations? Because you're not doing a lot of, you're not doing anything exotic out there. So yeah. what is it that makes this so valuable? What is it that you're doing that, that you can take away from? Like you said, there's, there's nothing exotic. It's just you and somebody else, and, you know, better man wins. Yeah. Um, and you, at next play, I mean, it's practice. You're going to get a lot of reps. So, you know, you win one, you, you lose some. But at the end of the day, you got to come back in that next play, um, ready, you know, make a statement, make a play. Uh, make sure you don't do the same mistakes twice. What's the biggest difference between a, a joint practice and a preseason game? I'm uh, pretty sure you're not going to see Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack in the preseason game. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably the biggest difference. Smith. Yeah, exactly. Justin Herbert. Yeah, all those guys. I think uh, being able to see those guys go, uh, you know, against high caliber players, you know, being able, you know, for me, a younger guy, being able to see what they do against those guys and, and you know, try to take notes from uh, what they do. It's a good room, uh, certainly, you know, what you guys got going. And one of the guys that's really raised his hand is uh, Jamal Davis. Yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. ended up having that sack on that last two-minute drill there. Kind of take us through, you know, what you see from him, what your relationship's oh, yeah. like with him Everybody, and what he's doing out here. <laughs> Everybody in the room loves Jamal. I mean, he, he's funny. Uh, he's a great guy to have in the room, lightens it up real uh, well. Uh, but, you know, he, he's a hammerhead. He, he's going to go in there. And, you know, just put his shoulder into things. And we, and like Coach Davis said, we want to be physical and tough this year. Um, and he brings that to our defense, and we love seeing him do it. I remember, I think it was maybe Cincinnati where I saw the flashes. I'm like, okay, Chris yeah. is coming on. That was like in December. And um, you talk about your off season, you put it on weight. What was this off season like for you in an effort to, to make that big jump from your rookie season to year two? Yeah, just that rookie season, man. I'm going to be honest, that wasn't even me. Y'all didn't see um, what I did in college and all, you know, the confidence level was not there. Uh, so coming in this off season was, like I said, just trying to get stronger. And with the strength and, and, and the size came the confidence. And I'm like, okay, hey, let's just get back to playing, you know, my type of football. And that's what I'm doing this year. That's why I'm playing faster. Um, you know, I'm making plays. I'm just – that's how I am. That's my playmaking abilities coming out in true form this year. Did your, uh, did your dad coach Khalil? Was he – were they together there? Uh, no, he did not coach. So he, he was, But he was, around, he was around him. He was around yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You got a couple of jokes. He owes my dad a Cadillac. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. My dad's still waiting on that. Just I don't think he's going to get it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, when Khalil shows up, you know, as someone who's expected to be, you know, a big part of that edge rotation, yeah. kind of – have you had conversations with how much do you want to pick his brain? You know, what, oh, yeah. what is that like? No, I mean, anytime we go in the meeting room or anytime I'm around them, like, we're always talking ball. I mean, that's the difference between, I think, this locker room and a lot of other locker rooms. We love talking ball. We love sharing ideas, especially the older vets, um, sharing their wisdom with the younger guys like me, Carlo Kim, JD, E. 
um, Ty. So they, they're really open. You know, we can be honest with them. You know, we joke with them all the time. So it's really a, a real relationship bond there. Um, not with just me, but everybody in the room. Everybody talks about how different Joey and Khalil are as <laughs> yeah. pass rushers. Yeah. Where do you fall in, into that category? Do you, do you take a little bit of both of their yeah. games? How, how would you describe your game in relation to them? Uh, I'd say, um, you know, Khalil's probably going to start off with power. Um, so, and Joey's more going to start off, you know, his, his double swipe, swipe. So for me, I know, I mean, obviously I had to work on my strength. So I'm not a power guy. I'm more of a Joey starting off with a double swipe. But at the same time, Khalil knows his power game. He knows the long arm technique and what he can work off of that. So I also take that into account. So having those, you know, those two different type of pass rushers is great in my, in, in my opinion, because I get to take, you know, things from Joey and Khalil and implement both yeah. in, in my, into my game. And hopefully, you know, I'll be the best of both of them. When we talk to uh, Joshua Kelly, you know, obviously he looks different. You look different <laughs> coming into this camp. He was talking about diet, um, just kind of habits, lifting and all that. Kind of walk us through your off season. What, what changed to, to help you put on some weight here? Uh, focus. I was, just, I was really focused this off season. Um, I really took it as, as a personal, you know, chip on my shoulder, um, especially last year, you know, playing lighter, you know, um, not being more as explosive and, and dominant like I wanted to be. So I really had to chip on my shoulder to come in the weight room every day, no matter if I was tired, I didn't want to do it. I knew this is my job. I know if I can get to the point, I know I'm, what I'm capable of. So I just kept reminding myself and, uh, you know, trusting God and, and everything worked out, you know. But I'm still hunting, I'm still grinding. I'm still not anywhere close to where I know I can be. So are that's you, the that's the more exciting part. Are you still eating canes? That seems to be a popular yeah, thing. Yeah, like, of course. Okay, so I mean, that's, that's the thing about Josh, Josh said I had Josh to cut, cut out the canes. Out. Josh said, no. We're gaining away. I mean, with my metabolism, I, just, I can eat anything. And right. It'll probably just fall right off of me. So <laughs> canes really doesn't affect me. But trust me, I love are it. Are you doing like a gallon of ice cream at night to put on uh, weight? That kind of weight no, gainers and any of that stuff? A little protein shakes. Okay, we got to keep it, you know, somewhere healthy. You're not an O-lineman. You're a D-lineman. No, I'm not. I'm a D-lineman. I got to move faster than those guys. I remember. I remember right after you were drafted, I talked to one of your coaches, Coach Albert. Coach Albert, Coach yep. Ben Albert, yeah, and, you And uh, it, it's cool to see him, like, he's tweeting out all his Duke guys yeah. after after week one of the preseason. <laughs> Obviously, you were included in that. Uh, yeah, your, your Duke roots, uh, how – how close in contact do you keep in touch with those guys oh, throughout the wow. offseason? And, and I'm sure they're proud of you, man. Oh, yeah. I, I talk to them all the time. I, I talk to them all the time, especially uh, my homeboy, Victor Dumacage. I called him last night and messed with him. Uh, as a matter of fact, before our preseason game, he had two sacks in his game. He balled out. So I was like, I can't let him show me up. And showing up, I did. I could have had two. I missed it. But, yeah, we talk to those guys, FaceTime all the time. We, we've got group chat. We're still in, in, in good contact. So, we make sure everybody's doing good, staying healthy, and um, keeping up uh, up track with them. A little, a little small trash talk as well. Perfect, yeah. uh, perfect segue. So, you pretty much wrecked the first couple offensive series uh, in that preseason game, I and mean, you yes. certainly you're the yes. best defensive player on the field in that game. Um, what do you take away? Because you mentioned should have had two. You think about that one that you didn't get. You think about the one that you did get. I'm thinking that one that didn't get because if I get if I get that one, we're off the field. They're not kicking field goal. They're putting. At the end of the game, the offense doesn't is not down by seven. It's probably a tie game. They're going to win the game, kick a field goal or worse. So I really took that one hard, um, knowing that you know if I make that play, we're probably going to win that game. So that was really fresh. I was really disappointed in myself. I, I love that attitude. Last one for me, Chris. You know Khalil and Joey in the room. They're trying to identify that third pass rush. You've raised your hand, man. Yeah. How excited are you to show the fans, your teammates, what 94 is going to do in year two? I'm really excited. I, I owe them for last year, you know, not showing up for all those games. But, um, you know, this is a new year. Um, I got new strength, new confidence. Um, Coach Giff is doing a great job with us, making sure we're getting off the ball. I love the room. I'm happy where I'm at right now. I still got to keep going, keep growing. But... Um, I'm really excited for this season. But, you know, we still got – hey, we got this preseason game yeah. Saturday. We got That's preseason right. game next week. So, take it one day at a time. I figure since you say uh, you like Canes, I'm going to keep you out here for a couple more, let you sweat out some LBs. <laughs> uh, All right, I'm going to tell Mondo on you. He's going to have a fit yeah, with right. him. Um, just going back to the, the one that got away. I mean, you know how mobile quarterbacks are. Now, share with us just kind of what you have to do, the calculus you have to do as a pass rusher for contain versus attack. And, you know, I'm thinking about yeah. that Thursday game. I mean, nothing against Derek Carr, but, you know, we know he tends to hang out in the pocket. Yeah. But, you know, when it's like Patrick Mahomes, we know how important it is to, to keep that contained. So what does that do to a pass rusher? How do you then approach each snap knowing that's in the back of your mind? Um, uh, you, you think about it. You know, you, you have the scouting report. Hey, like, we're playing Lamar Jackson. Okay, we can't take it as high as we want to. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, 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 we're still hunting. 
Um, you know, I think what separates a lot of the, the elite pass rushers and you know the below average ones is being able to make those those decisions. Hey, do I have the the edge? Can I bend it against this guy and making those uh, millisecond decisions um, that can affect the play? So, um, really, you're just going out there hunting and playing smart, playing confident. All right, and the last thing, uh, I hope this doesn't come out the wrong way. Come on, it's give been it to me. it's been a while uh -huh. since. We, we watched a, a punt returner do this. Yeah. Um, as someone that's on cover, when, when you have a punter that can hang a ball up there for five <laughs> seconds and you don't have to make a tackle and yeah. you don't have to cover a punt, how does that feel? It's like, you know, like a core four guy, like how does that, what does that do for a special team unit when you're like, we ain't got to hit anybody, we got to tackle anybody? <laughs> um, damn, JK, can we get some action here? <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, when you have a punter like JK, I mean, he's, he's hitting some bombs. I'm, bombs, I'm, man. Bombs, and, and just seeing the hang up and knowing, Hey, you know, all we have to do is protect for this guy, and this guy's going to kick it what, 60 yards and have a right. five, five second hang time. And all we have to do is go down and cover. That's a that's great for our confidence. Yeah. Um, just knowing our assignments and and doing our job it just makes us feel better, um, makes it easier, honestly. So we love J.K. He, you know, he's a goofy guy. We uh, <laughs> we always joke with him, and he's fun to hang around with. Chris, I'd be remiss. I, you know what? I, I said last one, but yeah, sure. Now you're making him sweat. <laughs> we live in this 24-hour news cycle, though, and you know, Darwin's back. Darwin's back. I mean, the energy that he brings to the field. Yeah. I know he's he didn't participate fully in these practices, mm -hmm. but just the fact that number three is back on the field, what is that going to do for the defense? Is it does it kind of bring it bring practice to another level? I think you. I think we all know the answer to that question. Um, you know, DJ's a, a one of a, one of a once in a generation player. Let's be honest. Um, especially his his intelligence on the field. Um, just him being able to know where to put everybody on, not just himself, but everybody else on the defense. Again, let's all come on the same page. Um, I mean, it's invaluable to have a player like that, especially in, as a defense, you know, against going against these, you know, unique offenses. So having him back, having his energy back is, is priceless, and we love him. He loves being out here is the one thing y'all already know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he crazy. loves football. So, you know, just having him around, loving football. I love football. It's just, I mean, how, how much better can it get? I think they have, you know, they have a get-back coach. Um, I think you have a get back coach for Derwin. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, like, definitely. No, no, no. <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't go. You can't go. How many sacks for 94 this year? How many exactly. sacks are you calling? You know, I don't like to do yearly projections. He'll have, he'll have a sack on Saturday, though. I know that. Oh, yeah. So let's, you know, here's what I like to do. I like to do game to game. Yeah. Game to game. I don't game. like to look too far ahead. All right. I, like, like, I got to just focus on what's right ahead of us. <laughs> All I know is it's, it's a sin. Yeah, I, it's late. Like, as, exactly. as long as he's doing that, we're good. We appreciate exactly. you, man. I appreciate Thank you for stopping by. We know it's hot. Anytime. I like them shades. I'll get you a pair. The fish. I will. I'm not kidding. We'll get you some pits. Get, get Chris there we go. Some Zion pits. walking right in. Zion, Zion, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Good to, good see, to see you, you. too. Yeah. Two days of practice with the Dallas Cowboys. How'd that feel? Uh, good. It felt great to go against another team, get that experience. And what are the one-on-ones like? Um, I mean, it's good. You get you get some time to watch those guys on film, see what they're about before. Um, it's also a good learning experience. You know, we have great players on our team, but you know, other teams in the league have great players as well, and you get to go against different play styles and learn new things. Did it, did it feel different to actually have another opponent here for two straight days? Did the work feel different to you? I mean, it felt like practice is just, you know, it's a different defense, different guys, different tendencies. So, you know, it was a little different, but, but the structure of practice was pretty similar to how we usually go. Let's go, uh, let's go back to the game, your first ever NFL game. I know it's a preseason game. It's not yeah. week one against the Raiders, but just kind of take us through, you know, what that was like, how it felt, you know, the, the, the series that you got to get out there and, and do some work. I mean, it, it felt amazing. I mean, you know, you always dream about being able to play on an NFL field with NFL players and that whole experience, but to actually do it is something different. And, you know, I feel like it was a, a good beginning to get my feet wet. And now, you know, I have another opportunity this weekend to play against the Cowboys in the preseason. So, Zion, the transition from, you know, rookie to really plug and play starter for you, um, how has that been knowing that it's your first year in the league, but they're also, they're counting on you to, to make a difference right from week one? I mean, it, it's been good, I'd say. You know, I have a lot of resources, a lot of people that help me learn, help me get better every day. You know, whether it be the guys on the O-line, you know, Corey, Rashawn, um, you know, Filer, all the other guys in the room that have a lot of experience as well. And then the guys on defense that are great players and I go against and practice every day and make me a better player. You know, the coaches as well, everyone has done a lot to help me get better every day. We heard uh, Corey say some great things about you. It was about a week ago, I think. I'm sure you saw that. But yeah. kind of, what is more important? Like, what are, when you talk about learning from those guys, is it is it mental? Is it sort of like I need to know 
this sort of thing, or is a lot of it physical, technique, is it both? Like, what is it that you're, you're able to take away from them? In my mind, technique is very mental as well as physical because there's, you know, a mind-muscle connection. You have to know what to do before you can actually execute it with your body. So I think a big part of it's mental, picking those guys' brain, you know, kind of getting inside their head when they go and see different looks, you know, on each play and, you know, learning from what they do. I, so I'd say a lot of it's mental. How much is, is also just learning Justin, too, how he does things back there, the, the running backs. Obviously, there's a competition between, behind Austin. You see Joshua in there with the ones, Isaiah with the ones. What's that like? I, I'd say the main thing is understanding our offense and how we fit in it, what we're expected to do. Um, that gives me a, you know, a good idea of what I need to do from a technique perspective, where the defensive lineman needs to end up at the end of the rep. So um, you know, I'd say those things are the most important. Now, you were left in college, right? Yes, I was so left So how's that been? Like, is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? And um, I mean, when, when you haven't done something, of course, there's a learning curve. But I feel like I've taken, you know, ownership of that and I've become pretty, pretty good working out of a right stance. And, you know, I have a great coach and, you know, guys in our room that have given me lots of things to help me. So. Austin Eckler said he's working on an app, so he's not only <laughs> counting on you to block for him, but also maybe to help him a little bit. He said that, that a cybersecurity oh, background yeah. may come in handy. Has he talked to you about that? I mean, just a little bit here and there, <laughs> but that app he's making, it sounds awesome. It yeah. sounds really good, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we last saw you, at least last had a chance to talk to you out at the, the golf outing. Mm -hmm. uh, by now, everybody knows your backstory about yeah. what you were playing in, in high school. How long had it been since you played, and did it reignite anything inside of you, uh, especially living in Southern California, that you might go get a set of clubs and start playing a little bit? It'd been a few years, and it definitely did. I know this, I mean, after the season, I'm probably going to go out. Not and Probably before, I won't have time, but um, that's definitely something I see in my future, playing more golf. I know. Someone's, I'm sure people have asked you this, but just as someone who, who plays some golf and knows how important it is to be connected, like everything has to be connected for that ball to go exactly where you want it. It's the frustrating thing. Mm -hmm. Does that, do you think that helps you? Like, does that apply? Because it certainly seems like you, in technique and O-line, you really got to be connected with your feet and everything in order to kind of have a successful, uh, a successful set. I mean, I think just the, the base traits of being an athlete help you, the discipline, you know, the ability to work on something, work on your craft and get better at certain things, that translates, um, especially to golf, because golf's a very frustrating game. You know, you need a lot of practice, a lot of reps at certain things to, you know, be able to even hit the ball straight. So, um, yeah, I'd say there are things that, that definitely connect. I know you got a lift, so we'll get you out of here on this. Uh, this defense, this Chargers defense that you go up against on a on a day to day basis mm -hmm. with Austin Johnson and Sebastian Joseph Day, this thing has been revamped uh, from last year. Um, what have you seen from this D day in and day out as you guys really try to sharpen your game? I mean, those guys are great. They give us a good challenge every day. Um, you know, they're really masters of their craft. We see them out here after practice, getting in extra work. You know, doing what they need to do to become you know even better players than they already are and. You know, like I said, I talked about me getting better, but a big part of offensive linemen getting better is going against good defensive linemen, and that's what we have here on this team. Well, he said left, so I got to ask one more. Um, between all the offensive linemen, where do you slot in in terms of strength? <laughs> like, what? Who's the strongest? I'm going, I'm going power you, rankings, maybe where right are you here. Coming at? And whatever is your your best, you know, your best lift. In terms so, of strength, like if it's a squat or a, a bench uh, or whatever. I mean, that's tough. We, we really lift, the rookies, we kind of lift on our own. We don't get to lift with those guy, guys. But from what I've heard, you know, Corey Lindsley has un, unearthly strength. Like, <laughs> I, I'm talking like 400 like it's nothing. But, um, you know, I'd say I'm up there. I'm up okay. there somewhere. But, um, you know, we, we've got some good competition in our room for strength. If it were lift Olympics and you could only sign up for one event, what event, what lift event would it be that you would say like, all right, I can, I can win gold in this one? I'd probably say bench press. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bench press. What Nobody's you, touching what you benching? bench. Huh? What are you benching? I mean, we we haven't maxed in a while, but I can I can I can take four or five for Ooh. some reps now. Oh, some reps. About four times what I can do. Yeah. And this is after practice. He's about to put up four or five. <laughs> exactly. By the way, two practices against the Cowboys. Yeah, exactly. Right so, on, Sam. We appreciate we it. Appreciate you, man. Thank you All for right. stopping yeah. by. Thank you. You guys have a good one. All, All right. right. You too. Right off the rip, man. Chris Rumpf, Zion Johnson. Exactly. Yeah. Now I got to remember where we were and what we were talking about. We were oh talking, yeah, yeah. We were, we were talking, talking uh, 
So yeah, offense, defense for joint practices. Um, I mean, as, look, to be brutally honest, it was a tough ending today. You had a uh, you had a hail mary um, with zeros on the clock, about 40, 50 yards thrown into the corner of the end zone. Three yep. Chargers. I think it was Asante, Deluca, and Raheem Lane uh, that lost that battle. So touchdowns. The Cowboys are celebrating. And then on the other side, you had Easton throw. I was at Easton or Chase. It was, was Chase. It was it was actually pick two minute. I think I think Justin threw a pick to to Van Der Esch, and then uh, Chase threw one in the end zone to, to end it. To yeah, so tough ending. But if you go before all of that, I mean, and I watched offense yesterday. I mean, we had some beautiful plays. Man, DeAndre Carter got Trayvon Diggs in the spin cycle. Man, for a long touchdown from Justin. That was fun to watch. And you know, he's one of the better corners in the league. I thought Mike was dominant. Um, you know, I think the important thing is to win to watch the team win the reps against the players they're supposed to win the reps against. And I think the Chargers certainly did that all practice long. Um, it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned uh, Mike and DeAndre because like my takeaway over there was just, Justin threw a touchdown to Keenan. Uh, he got the ball to Palmer. He got the ball to Everett. So it just kind of, I think, reinforces the fact that there's so many weapons on this team and Justin does not, care who it is yeah. whoever whoever's open he's throwing the ball to um so I, I mean i don't i don't see a world in, in which this offense isn't doing exactly what it did last year if not better yeah so i think kind of some of my my takeaways you know at this point are you know one deandre carter's gonna have a role in this offense it's clear it's clear that yeah. all three quarterbacks like throwing to him He's where he's supposed to be. I'm not saying he's Deshaun um, Jackson fast, but like he he's he's yeah. doing go routes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think you got that, um, and then also I've just been super. And this goes back to the game on Saturday as well, since we haven't you know done the pod since then. But just incredibly impressed with Jamal Davis. I think he's got a shot to make this roster. Um, he had another sack today. It was a sack. I think I mentioned it already. Maybe uh, it was the the play right before that hail mary. But he had sacked Dak, or it might have been two plays prior to that. But you know, and you heard Chris talk about him that he's just a hammer. He's a real physical player. We know that's been a theme of of Coach Staley's um, you know through camp and, and coming into this year. We got to be more physical team, and Jamal Davis is physical. So I think uh, those two things stand out. Um, watching Slater stand up to Marcus Lawrence yesterday. I was watching offense was yesterday, you know, just stoned him dead in his track. Zion actually had a couple really good reps uh, as well. I thought the, the right tackles played about even, but there was, you know, some good and, and some, some struggle from both Norm and Trey. Um, I thought Storm had a really good opening rep. I think he's, if I remember right, he started live. He started the live portion um, and, and I thought played really well. So I think that's, that's probably still going to come down to the wire. Um, those are some of the things that stand. I'm trying to think of what else. The oh, played Mikey well Davis had too. a really nice. Michael Davis had a pick yesterday, um, and he had a really nice pass breakup today early. In, I, um, I think that was the last play I saw. I saw you were over here. I mean, you know, I'm yeah. gonna go watch. I'm gonna go watch the offense, and, and I saw Mikey's pass breakup yeah. here. That was the last play I saw. Yeah. Um, to go back to the offensive line, they were rolling today too. Keenan actually called him out. Like, hey, good. O line, like he, yeah. he was getting after the O line. Because yesterday they had a, they had a tough day. Yesterday they struggled a little bit, and you know Austin mentioned after the game, after practice, um, at the lectern that uh, he's like, yeah, they were running stunts. He's like, you're not supposed to run any stunts. He's like, so we had no idea what they were doing. So the good news is, is okay. Well, maybe they ran the same stunts today, and now they had a chance to prep for them because they probably didn't prep for any of those. So to hear adjustment made, offensive line plays great. That's exactly what you want to see, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's encouraging. Just kind of going back to Michael Davis. You know, I'm now interested. Look, we've all kind of just assumed that he's going to be the fourth corner. You know, that's going to be Callahan on the slot, and then Asante and and JC on the outside. And I'm wondering if he's starting to to push a little bit. You know, to to keep that as an open competition. We know it's all about competition, but I think uh, last couple days, you know, he's he's had really good practices, and he's been running with the ones. Yeah. You know, opposite JC on a handful of these these snaps. So I think that's something that, that you can also take away, and I'll be interested to watch because both he and Asante played on Saturday in that preseason game. They did. Um, so I think that's something to certainly keep an eye on. And Asante and Michael, I mean, they almost came in with the same knowledge level of this defense, right? Yeah. So so Michael, Michael in his second year in Staley's defense. Yeah, and we know he struggled last year in yeah. his first year, so, you know, maybe he's just more comfortable. Yeah, the, I think the competition in the secondary is definitely showing with Callahan and, and Asante and Michael Davis. And um, I, I think, too, 
good, bad, or indifferent out here, they're going to go and make corrections. And I think it's, it's important for them to get into that mode of like seeing an opponent, the one seeing a different opponent, making the corrections in the film room. So like these last, these next 48 hours for the ones, it's almost as important in the room to see what we did right, what we did wrong, what we can correct moving forward going into Las Vegas. Yeah, I think it's, you know, we're obviously recency biased because we just watched two really competitive joint practices with two really good teams but just kind of going back even though it was all it was no starters um for the rams and stuff but i i do think there there's takeaways from the preseason game as well and something i'll be interested in watching on on saturday and that's that josh kelly played really well you know i think there's a reason he got yep. the start um I, I think he's probably the the favorite or the incumbent to be the the number two back behind austin and i thought a couple of those past catch like some things that we hadn't really seen from joshua in the past there was one uh, there was one reception where he had a jump cut and had a little bit of explosion there. I was like, okay, that's yeah. new. Um, so I think and it was like an 11 yard gain. So I think um, I think that's something to continue to watch. Yeah. Um, you um, know, even though again, like I said, we're really focused on watching those guys go against ones. He's um, he's we've we've sung his praises. I will continue to. I will say yeah. I think the ball went on the ground yesterday, um, and that can't happen. So like right. that, those are things that we're gonna have to see right. in a game, and and obviously practice that stuff happens and you move on but um coach Staley's talked about the little things and and I, and I think if Isaiah and Joshua can continue to to run at that level and to, and yeah. to explode like I think Staley talked about the fact that Joshua just running forward getting those extra yards I mean that was fun to see man because yeah. like we we got to we got to sit down with him and then 48 hours later see him everything that he talked about he delivered on you yeah. know 44 yards in that 100%. first half it was, it was awesome to see 100 percent. so should be a great preseason game looking forward to doing this next week and and recapping what we saw from a lot of those position battles but i think you know if you're keeping score at home some things that i would i would watch defensive tackle you know i think there's a reason that jerry didn't play last year and, and jerry tillery played this year in the preseason yeah. i think that rotations up you know is kind of a, a conversation piece i think you know we talked about the, the running back rotation and who's fighting to be number two so that's certainly something uh worth keeping an eye on what about and, hey what about wide receiver with with bandy and reed i mean like, those are guys that we didn't really think about look, i know? love michael bandy we talk about him every preseason i mean i i desperately desperately i really would love to see him get an opportunity i just think about game day and what game day roster looks like and i just the idea of having him make the team out of camp um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> right what's number up, three um the uh, the idea of having him make the team out of camp, he's not going to be on the active roster for 17 weeks. Yeah. So eventually, if your thought is, oh, we have to keep him or we're going to expose him, someone's going to be able to claim him because he ain't going to be out there. Um, so I think wide receiver, believe it or not, even with all the money that was spent this, this offseason on free agents and, and all the first-round picks that are invested, I just think if you put Michael Banning in the practice squad, he's probably going to stay there. You know, I think that's – and then when you're doing that calculus, it's like, okay, if we put – Brain Fajoko on the practice squad. If we put Joe Gassiano on the practice squad, are they going to stay there? Probably not. I think, well, you know what? I think Saturday you know? will be a good indication whether or not Bandy and Reed will stay there, right? Yeah. Because if they have if they have good performances on Saturday, then you put yourself in a position where it's it's more for them. It's like, okay, we put good stuff on tape so we can get picked yeah, up some more. Exactly. Else, and right? that's the key, you know, and that's the nice thing about joint practices and about preseason games is you have two sets of eyes. So now you have two coaching staffs that teams from around the league can call and say hey what did you think of bandy out there you know to the rams coaching staff last week and same thing because look that's ultimately that's what you want if the guys you know aren't aren't at a level where they're going to crack your 53-man roster you want to see them get an opportunity you know yep. they're working hard they're good players you know bandy's been a great player for this team every single preseason um so i'd love to see him get an opportunity uh, absolutely and it's it's just so fun to watch him man he's i think what people forget is he's a lot bigger than you think mm -hmm. he's you know he's 190 pounds like he's a big dude he's not some spindly guy i mean he's he can bring some contact he can absorb contact he can initiate contact so i think that's where maybe there's an opportunity for him to find his way onto a onto a roster before we go he just tapped you on the shoulder derwin james yeah um the best dude it's just the, he, the energy the, is incredible he's the best and and I, I i think we all expected this to get done and you know now like we got 24 days till the opener like, that's the key there's plenty of time for him to ramp up and get this thing rolling that's the key is you know getting it done now you got three plus weeks to to get you know all those things you're worried about the soft tissue injuries because you didn't ramp up you know you didn't have enough time to ramp up i think that stuff you know you can certainly breathe a lot easier now than you could before um and I'm, I know for a fact he, he thought he was going to be able to play. Like he, 
like he legitimately thought that coach was going to let him get out there. He's so like, he, he needed boy, to get I, that coach. Like today. he said, he said, can I, can I do one-on-ones? And they're like, no, yeah. can I play just seven on seven? No. Yeah. Like that's, that's who you give a contract like that to. Yeah. That guy I, loves football. And I asked Chris, I know it's an obvious question, but it, like the, the fact that he gets to be on the grass now with this defense. Now, now we can really see what it's going to look like, right? Because because their one's going to make splash plays that you know Everything's somebody different. frankly else in this. Think about the first two weeks. I mean, having Derwin out there against Darren Waller, week Kelsey. one, Travis Kelsey, week two. That's it. No, no, no player has a better opposing passer rating against as a defender than Derwin when he's checking those tight ends. Their production is less than when they go against any other player in the league when Derwin is on the field. That's how good he is. That's not. I'm, I'm not embellishing. That's straight stats. 100. percent And you said it. Like, hey, listen, car cars clocks in and gets sped up a little bit more with uh, Khalil. With, with Khalil and with and, Chris and and with Chris. Oh, you know, and yeah, no doubt. It's it's gonna be fun. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Between now and then, though, we got two. We're gonna. Anything find else our... you want to see Saturday? Special teams. More more hang time, baby. Yeah. More uh, more JK. More, more baby. five second punts. Yeah. So guys don't have to tackle and you don't have to cover every single punt after the ball leaves his foot leaves your punter's foot. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, all in the all in trailer was was ridiculous. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and Tyler Pino's here. At, at some point, I'd like to have Tyler Pino on to talk about all in. Maybe before we get this thing rolling in, in August. One but day, one day. Yeah, exactly. One, one day. day. There's an open chair. Yeah, maybe not this day. time, Tyler. I'm gonna be with Tyler tomorrow. Actually, doing my hits for. Uh, for all in, for all in. So yeah. Tra- I mean, that's that's what the people trailer got. Hear, the trailer got me. I see a George in Cordova, Pito. I'm ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> Brian, appreciate the offer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. That's gonna do it for us. Uh, it was a fun two days here with the Cowboys. We're done at Jack Hammett. Yeah, we're, we we're are. going back to Hogue next week. Going back to Hogue next week, and I love that because I know an, a perfect spot to stand yeah, where there's shade. Just, Out here, nothing. Yep. It's been a lot of sunscreen, bucket hats, pits. Yep. And uh, at, ha- at, at Hogue, I, I have that tarp on the back side of the wall that cuts some nice shade. Yep. We'll get rump those pits. and uh, Exactly. Oh, good good reminder. Yep. I will. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. For Money, I'm Chris. See ya.